Hi, in today's video, I will answer these three questions. What is condensation? Why do I experience more condensation when I'm camping? And what can I do to stop condensation? The answer's coming up. Stay tuned. One of the most frequent questions I get, and certainly one of the biggest complaints about camping is how can I stop condensation? In today's video I hope to give you important information that can put you in control of condensation. Hi I'm John with Let's Go Now Adventures. If we haven't met yet we make videos about camping. More specifically how you can have a better camping experience. You know whether you're into tent camping, RV camping, or you would like to get started camping and don't know where to start. Our videos will give you the skills and the confidence so you can have an awesome camping adventure. Have you ever been camping and noticed small puddles of water on the floor of your tent? Or maybe noticed small droplets of water clinging to the inside walls of your tent or your RV? More than likely, you don't have a leak. The real culprit is condensation. So what is condensation? Condensation is the term used to describe when a substance goes from a gas state to a liquid state. In the case of water, there's water in the air. That's right, water that's all around us. Water in its gas phase is called water vapor. And depending on where your location is, that could be a little bit of water in the air or a lot of water in the air. People say you live in a dry climate or a humid climate. That's what they're talking about, is the amount of water vapor in the air. Why, in fact, if you took all of the air on Earth, there's 357 followed by 14 zeros. Gallons of water in, that's a lot of zeros. And sometimes when you're camping, it feels like all of that water is inside your tent. Condensation occurs when warm air meets a cold surface. Take that glass of lemonade on a hot summer day. After a minute or two, there are water droplets on the outside of your glass. No, your glass isn't leaking. It's water coming from the air condensing on the cold surface of the glass. When we camp, sometimes the relatively warm air inside our tent comes in contact with the cooler inside surface of your tent or your RV. We see this more when we're camping because we have our whole group sleeping inside of a small space. Tents in many RVs don't have the insulation that our homes do. The inside surfaces of our tents and RVs can get much cooler than the inside walls of our homes. So at home, the air and the walls are close to the same temperature. When we're camping, we take the same number of people, put them in a much smaller space with only a piece of fabric or a thin wall to separate us from the cooler nights. So the warm air inside of our tent condenses on the cool surfaces of our tent or RV, which results in water buildup inside of our tent. This can cause all of our gear we are trying to keep dry by bringing it into our tents to become damp at best, soaking wet at worst. With one of our main goals in camping is to stay dry, this presents a problem. Now, there's good news and bad news. The bad news, there's nothing you can do to stop condensation. However, the good news is that you can manage condensation. With the knowledge that's upcoming in this video, you can make choices and have a strategy that will keep condensation from dampening your camping trip. You don't need to take notes for this part, because if you go down to the description below this video, I have prepared a PDF with a condensation management strategy. It'll list all the things I talk about today, so just click on the link to get your copy. So when you're camping, you don't always have the option to use all of the techniques I'll be talking about. But with knowledge from this video, you can make good choices to reduce the amount of condensation. So here we go. Number one, if you take away only one idea from this video, it's this first and most important one. The way to prevent excessive condensation is to increase ventilation. So opening doors, opening vents, 
It's the single most effective way to um, reduce condensation. Yes, you're going to give up a little bit of heat, but in the long run, staying dry is more important. If your gear gets wet, it's so much harder to stay warm. Number two, store your wet clothing and wet gear outside. Let it dry outside of your tent or your RV. As wet clothing dries, water vapor evaporates from them. In other words, puts water vapor into the air, which is just waiting to hit the cool surface of the inside of your tent or RV and condense. Three, don't touch the sides of your tent. The water droplets that are deposited on the side of your tent are being held in place by a force called surface tension. And by touching the side of the tent, it breaks the surface tension. Now the water can flow through from that point. Touching the walls creates a point where water can flow and cause drips, and drips cause puddles of water on the floor. Or worse, drip on your gear. Or even worse, drip on you. Number four, limit your cooking inside. The process of cooking causes evaporation. And just like in the wet clothing example, evaporation inc increases the amount of water vapor in the air, which can lead to more condensation. So number five, limit your use of a heater. There are two reasons heaters can cause an increase in the amount of condensation that's in a tent or an RV. The first is warm air can hold more water vapor. That means there is more water vapor to condense when it hits the cool wall of your tent or your RV. The second is that anytime you combust a hydrocarbon like propane, the byproducts of that combustion are carbon dioxide and water. For example, burning one gallon of propane produces the equivalent of about 0.8 gallons of water. So let's take my portable buddy heater. If I ran it on high for eight hours, which is the 9,000 BTU setting, it would burn about 0.4 gallons of propane, thereby producing about one-third of a gallon of water. Six, pitch your tent where there's a slight breeze. If there's air movement outside of your tent or your RV, that air is actually pulled outside faster than if there were no breeze at all. Seven, pitch further away from a water source like a lake or a river and set up your camp on dry ground. There's much more water vapor in the air near any body of water or on top of wet soil. So if you have a choice, set up further from the water and set up on dry ground. Number eight, take spare towels to wipe down the walls of your tent in the morning. There's no way to stop condensation. If you're prepared with extra towels, you can wipe down the tent in the morning. This gives your tent a better chance to dry out during the course of the day. Also, if it's not raining, open up those windows, open up the doors, and allow that ventilation to speed up the drying process. Nine, use a battery-powered fan. It doesn't have to be a big fan or a fan that moves a lot of volume of air. Just keeping the air moving inside of your tent or RV will amplify any of those ventilation efforts you've made. Number 10, use a dehumidifier. There are dehumidifiers that are made for tents and RVs, and they can be very effective. Personally, I haven't needed to use a dehumidifier yet, but if I were planning on camping in a very humid climate, I would certainly consider adding a dehumidifier to my kit. Number 11, avoid setting up in low spots, depressions and valleys. Water vapor is he a heavier gas and will settle into the lower parts of valleys. Number 12, use a double walled tent, a rain fly or a tarp to form a double wall. This creates a buffer zone where the coldest surface is the layer on the outside. So this is where the condensation builds up, outside of your tent. It's important that the double wall doesn't touch directly on the inner fabric of your tent. If it does, this will break the surface tension and water can leak through at that point. The reason this works well with the double layer is you can open up your ceiling vents more. You can open up your window vents more to allow more ventilation without losing a lot of heat. You know, there are two more expensive ways to battle condensation, and that would be a tent with a waterproof yet breathable fabric 
but those can run between fifteen and thirty five hundred dollars and the other is an indirect heater where the heater is actually outside the tent and the warm air is pumped in once again those can run up to a couple of thousand dollars so to wrap up there is no way to eliminate condensation there is also no way to camp where all of the above strategies you can put into place in one campsite in the real world you're going to camp near water you're going to sometimes cook inside your tent and when it's cold you're going to use a heater sometimes it rains and there's no no breeze given the information you now have about condensation you can make choices to manage condensation so you can limit any negative impact condensation may have on your camping experience condensation is a problem but now you can manage it on your next trip I hope you found value in the video today if you did hit that like button and consider subscribing to Let's Go Now Adventures so you'll be notified when we release other camping related videos on your next camping trip may it be dry and I'll see you on the next adventure